shoots this commercial. He's the spokesman for Golden West Savings. It's impossible. Why? Because I'm their spokesman. You know when they show scenes of the old prospector and his mule, Lewis? You're the voice of the old prospector? No, Lewis. Uh, the old prospector knows there's gold hidden in the hills. Right, Lewis? Oh, well, we get the picture, Waldo. There must be some other savings and loan. They wouldn't replace us with some has-been cow chip kicker. I'm going to call my agent. Before you people get back to work, uh, the film lab sent me a couple of tickets to tonight's Laker game. Anyone want to go? Well, I don't know, but my grandmother has to have to operate. I hate to have to give them away. Damn it. You're not going? Oh, I've got my CPR class. Well, I can take my grandmother to the hospital anytime. <laughs> you mean if one of us is dying, you could save us with mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation? That's right. Tough choice. <laughs> Yeah, we get them. Oh, guess what? Oh, the film lab sent over two tickets to tonight's Laker game, but I don't want to go, so why don't you guys just draw a pencil? The two short ones win. Can't believe it, I actually won something. <laughs> oh, well, the heck with it. Skip, why don't you take her? Yeah, why don't you two kids go together? It seems right. Hey, come on, guys. You guys knock it off. There's absolutely nothing going on between me and Skiff. Oh, really? I didn't know that. For how long? <laughs> I got some great news. Last night when I came home from the basketball game, there was this note tacked up on my door. It says that my place is being fumigated over the weekend. I don't know where I'm going to stay. You're welcome to share my son's bunk room. He's got twin beds. Unless a room that smells like hamsters bothers you. Bumps is 34. He has a hamster. No. Oh, that's exciting! That was a terrific game. It went into double overtime. Oh, did you get a for that? No, Mr. Swift. That's so unfair. Well, if they don't want me, I don't want them. I'm going to take my money out of their Christmas club. Uh, how come you're not sitting with the others? Because I didn't ask them. Would you mind if we sat with you? Well, all right. <laughs> all right, listen up, everybody. 
Brett will be happy to sign some autographs after he's had a little grub. <laughs> right, thank you for your cooperation. Brett, come on over here. I want you to meet my friends. This is Andrea. Andrea. Hi. Roland. Roland, how you doing? Hi, Brett. Brooks. Hey, Brooks. Oh, I'm one of your biggest fans. I thought it was terrible the way the Yankees tried to take that home run away from you last year in that pine tar controversy. Oh, Brett, he's a cowboy. <laughs> oh, cowboy. Oh, forgive me. I'm always mixing up football and baseball. So, you play for Dallas. He's not in sports. He's an actor. Have I heard of him? <laughs> Wally Wooster. This is Brett Higgins. Wally. You rotten mule killer. This bar isn't big enough for both of us. This place is big enough for him and your whole midget family. Fred, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Winkler, the greatest boss a guy ever had. Mrs. Winkler, Marty's spoken very highly of you. Oh, oh no, 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 not this one, this one. Oh, I'm really pleased to meet you. Oh, I'm Aggie Aylesworth, and you have always been my favorite cowboy. <laughs> oh, my. You have such a strong, manly grip. Yeah, so do you. <laughs> This is my buddy Skip Tarkington. Glad to meet you, Skip. Pleasure to meet you, Brett. Marty's been telling us all about you. Oh, you, you, know, you mean the stuff about when we were in college? Yeah, we, we were the Gold Dust Twins. Yeah, we were like that. Two peas in a pot. Girls could hardly tell us apart. Were these women sided? <laughs> I always wondered if you did your own stunts. Ah, sure. I started off as a stunt. Really? Wow, isn't that dangerous? My director always said the only thing I needed a stand-in for was my acting. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Brett. We better get going. You're going to be late for your commercial. If you're not too busy, maybe you'd like to come with me and watch us shoot. See, we're shooting this campfire scene out at the old Paramount Ranch, and after we finish, maybe you and I can find some use for that fire. I'm in total. I make a mean chili. I love mean chili. <laughs> How about it? Oh, it sure sounds like fun. But I have to answer the phone. Oh, that's okay. We'll take care of it. Won't you, Marty? Oh, oh thanks, Marty. That's so sweet of you. It sure sounds like fun. <laughs> Reinhardt for seven years, and I'm telling you, it doesn't sound like it. Forget it, I'm not changing the law. But Rhino's aren't sarcastic. Why doesn't somebody answer the stupid phone? Hello. No, he isn't. I don't know when he will be, and I don't care. For your friend Arnold Flew. Who? Arnold Flew, Brett Higgins' real name. I looked it up. Well, who said he could get his calls here? Mrs. Winkler said she'd take his message. Well, then let her. Where is she? She's late. Oh, uh, she's having lunch with Flugie. Again? Yeah. Uh, they've been going out a lot. Not twice. It's just lunch and dinner. It doesn't mean anything. Besides, he's going back to Arizona tomorrow. Well, personally, I'm a little disappointed in Brett. I thought he was deeper than to go after a rich blonde with large breasts. Ah, uh, uh, man. He's such cliches. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes, I'll never forget the look on that guy's face when he kept shooting his bear. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, but we drove down to the Santa Monica Pier and Brett nearly bankrupted the shooting gallery. He must have won 30 stuffed animals. And then he insisted we stop at this hospital and give them to these invalid children. Big deal. <laughs> Did I get any calls? Uh, you got one call, but it was uh, cut off before we could get the message. <laughs> Probably Golden West Savings. And they said they wanted to talk. They love Brett's commercials so much they've decided to make him their spokesman. Congratulations, Arnold. Isn't it wonderful? He's going to be staying another month. <laughs> Ain't that great, old buddy, huh? <laughs> Yippee-i-o-ki-yay. Oh, okay. My girlfriend, Annette, won't let me stay with her. We had a big fight. What about? The fact that she didn't want me to stay with her. Oh, well, my offer's still open. Mm, thanks anyway, but I decided just to stay here. Here? Sure, I'll sleep on Aggie's couch. Well, isn't that interesting? You and Skip sleeping under the same roof. Get off it, Roland. I will be in Aggie's office, and Skip will be in his own room way down the other end of the hall. Just make sure nobody does any sleepwalking. Guys, Andrea and I are friends. Just friends. So you said. And I'm going to keep saying it. Guys, we haven't the slightest interest in each other. Have we, Andrea? 
No. I'm not the least bit interested in her. And I'm not the least bit interested in him. I think they're protesting too much, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. I have a date tonight. You do? So do I. <laughs> What are you doing here? I thought you had a date. I... Never had one. I just said that because you guys were riding me so much about Andrea. So what are you doing here? Oh, uh, Brett's making dinner for Mrs. Winkler at the apartment, so I thought I'd come over here and work on this new Dippy script. Never heard Dippy cuss like that before. <laughs> just like when we were back in college. He wanted to use the room to score with girls, so I had to sleep in the back seat of my Rambler. For two years, he had a good time. I had a runny nose. Listen, the bulb blew out in the movie Ola. Do you think you can help me look for a spare? Oh, that's what I'm living for. I did this to myself, using Brett to try to impress Mrs. Winkler, and look what happened. Always dreamed of her in my place. Now she's there, and I'm not. I know what you mean. When I was in high school, I had a friend who was a big stud with the girls. Biff Nyquist. I used to stand next to him at parties just to get the leftovers. <laughs> but doesn't she just drive you nuts? Mrs. Winkler? Sometimes the highlight of my day is just watching her yawn. And I hear you. The way she giggles, and that adorable way she tilts her head when she doesn't understand the thing you're saying. Oh, I never realized that you really like her. I'm such a wimp. Oh, well, here's a fun read. Who's who in Hungarian cinema? What are you putting yourself down like that for? I always wanted to ask her out, but I never had the nerve. It's because I'm too shy. <laughs> you shy? I'm <laughs> shy. That's why I'm standing here looking for a movie Ola bulb, and, and he's on the verge of seeing one of the seven wonders of the world. <laughs> We had to do this more often. <laughs> I still don't see why you don't stay at my place tonight, so... There's plenty of room. We could just sit around some more and talk. You know, make brownies. Mm -hmm. Pig out. <laughs> oh, brownies are spaffy. I'm easy. <laughs> no, it really sounds like fun, but... Uh, Hi, Andrea. I thought you had a... I did. But I got sick, so I had dinner alone. And I was lucky enough to run into Aggie in the bar. <laughs> we had a couple of drinks. And the most wonderful chat. <laughs> Can't imagine. Uh, just a couple of gals sitting around rapping about life and love. <laughs> oh, needlepoint, napkin ring. This makes me want to vomit. <laughs> Well, uh, good night, everybody. I'm really sorry. Oh, for... hey, it's too early to hit the old rack. Why don't you come back to my place for a nightcap, huh? I got a bottle of sour mash we could put a den into. Um, I think I'll take a rain check, okay? Oh, well, uh, how about you, Skip? Huh? We don't have to drink. We can play hearts. Easy. Oh, I've got a Rubik's Cube with three sides solved. Ooh, <laughs> I'm kind of tired, too. What am I, a leper? I'm a human being, you know. You might not realize this, but I do have feelings, too. That's what the elephant man said. Oh, I just love that movie, didn't you? No. Well, how about the play? Didn't see it. Well, how about the sound of music? Go away from me. You bet. I've seen people get ugly when they drink, but she just gets friendlier and friendlier. For, oh, that was awful. <laughs> it's about time to turn in. Yeah. Uh, if you need anything, I'll be right here. Uh, there. Down there. Uh, if you need anything, I'll be right Thanks. here. Uh, there. Down there. Thanks. 
see you tomorrow. Okay. Sleep tight. You too. Well, good night. Good night. Street sweepers and the street walkers. I haven't gotten a minute's rest. Listen, you could sleep back here. Here? Yeah, you take the bed. I'll sleep on the floor. Okay. Well, I'm not going to make you sleep on the floor. Well, I don't want you to have to sleep on the floor. Okay, well, there's a solution to this. And it's right here in this room. It's this big bed. I mean, it's huge. You know, you could sleep on one side of it, and I could sleep on the other. Sure. No big deal. Just common sense. But absolutely. Uh -huh. No big deal. Well, I think you should, because 
I'd like to go home now. Come on, Sherry. What is this? What are you pulling? It's our third date. Why, why are you playing games? I, I'm not playing games. I just want to know whether you like me because I'm me or because... I, I like you. I like... I like everything about you. And I know you like me. And I know you want the same thing I do. You know, maybe I do, but not tonight, okay? Then what'd you come up here for? For dinner. And? To talk. We have talked. Maybe too much. But not tonight, I mean it. You no, know, you could you could tease a guy to death. Look at you. Look at the way you're dressed. You shouldn't advertise if you're not gonna deliver the goods. I can't help the way I look or the way I'm built. I just wear what I think looks nice. So I'd really like to go home now. Listen. I spent a bundle on you. And I figure you owe me something. I owe you? Yeah. Then I'll pay you back. You sure will. Stop it! Stop it! Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you guys were still here. Yeah, we sure are. So do you mind? <sighs> Miss Winkle, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. No, I'm not, Marty. Would you take me home, please? Don't worry about it. I'll see if she gets there. Please, Marty. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's Marty. Well, oh, come on. Brett, we'll, we'll drive her home, and then we'll uh, get some beer. We'll have a little fun. Get out of here. Hey, this is my place, Brett. Come on, Mrs. Winkler. Oh! Oh! oh. Are you all right? No. Did you see what he just did to me? Oh, I'm sorry. But if you hadn't showed up, that punch would have been for me and maybe worse. Oh, no, Mrs. Winkler. Brett's not such a bad guy. Oh, you weren't here. I thought he was like that guy who used to play Fence Jackson. But he's not like him at all. Yeah, well, he sure hits like him. Ooh. I, I feel like this was all my fault. I introduced you. Don't blame yourself. Maybe this is my fault. I dress this way because I want people to notice me. Yeah, I guess certain people would. <laughs> but that doesn't give anybody the right to do what he did. Really? You think so? I sure do. Oh, thank you. Oh, why can't I find a guy like you? <laughs> Great, you? Great. <clears throat> Can't, you know, I just realized something. We did exactly what everybody thought we were going to do last night. We slept together. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, you'd never believe we slept in the same bed all night long and absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, who'd have believed it? Emmy-winning St. Elsewhere, Kathy has eyes for Dr. Craig. Later tonight, Johnny Carson welcomes comedian Will Schreiner. Should voting rights be extended to the homeless? I'm Jane Pauley. Tomorrow morning on Today, we'll get into that election year controversy and more. Tomorrow morning on Today.